This is not a review of the real William Hale. Only the movie version, but screw that guy, he sucks. You might think the real villain of Killers of the Flower Moon is the runtime. Actually, no, it's the white guys. More specifically, the old white guy, William Hale. Honestly, one of the evilest villains I've seen all year, but is he the most evil? How does his role impact the film? And what score would I give him 1 out of 10? All those questions and more about to be answered. Well, we mix these families together, and that estate money flows the right direction. It'll come to us. You know who I hate? Racist people? You know who else I hate? Good question. Greedy people. Hale is both. You see, back when this movie takes place, the Osage people found large amounts of oil on their land. And at the time, it was practically gold, making them some of the richest people around. You're thinking, hey, finders keepers, right? Good for them. Let them have it. It's their land. William Hale says, uh, that's a good point. I see that. But also, um, money? Just a little rough draft, you know, something I just drew up, you know, on, on a napkin in the toilet. Don't ask why there's napkins in my toilet. He's kind of a trickster in his free time, and he says, here's an idea. Let's get the Osage just for fun to trust me. Make them think I'm their best friend, their buddy. Hey, you know, if I got time, maybe get my goofy nephew to marry one of them. And when the time comes, we'll kill them. We'll kill all of them and take their money. The fact that this actually happened... Humans are the worst. It's an act of greed. It's an act of prejudice. And like I said, this guy sucks. This is the part of the character I feel a little weird talking about because it's a real villain motive, like in real life. And you can feel that realism in the character because while other aspects of this film I'm sure were changed for the movie, this is probably pretty spot on. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, wow, he has a great motive or he has a bad motive. Because that's weird. But yeah, the dude sucks. I've said that multiple times. Don't be like this guy. Be better, in case you need a reminder. And it's not too hard to be better than him. Just, just bear kindness. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Your friendship has always been greatly appreciated. Yeah. I'll do anything, yeah. anything. The reason Hale is such a good villain is because of the fact he's a realistic depiction of what a villain actually is. There are a lot of villains in the world, okay? Whoever scrapped Coyote vs. Acme, those damn companies who keep copywriting, copyright claiming my videos, and of course, your mom. <laughs> Real villains don't want to destroy the world or anything crazy like that. Most of the time, they want power and money and don't give a fuck about what they gotta do to get it. The money and power motive is a played out villain motive for sure, but it doesn't bother me that much here because I feel like the movie isn't as focused on why he's doing it, but rather how and what he does to achieve it. The evil act isn't the fact he wants money, it's what he does to the Osage people in order to get it. He pretends to have their best interests in mind, he pretends to be their friend, and later on even family. But no matter what kind of connection he forms with them, he's only ever thinking about himself. Hell, towards the end of the film, he's down to get his own family member killed because he's a risk to the operation. The film is strange because even the main character, Ernest, isn't a likable guy, but he does serve as our entry point to Hale. We meet him, he seems a little odd, okay, I guess. But as the movie goes on, we're exposed to more and more atrocities that borderline get unbearable to witness. Something about Hale that I think makes him even colder is the fact his emotion never really rises that much. In fact, the only person he seems to really get mad at is Ernest. It really puts you in that time period of prejudice where certain races weren't even treated like people, especially that's how Hale sees them. He just treats them like his playthings, not real people with feelings and emotions, but just a means to elevate his wealth and status. Truly one of, like I said, the most evil and just slimy villains of the year because he does horrible, horrible things, but without any reason to do it, and he feels absolutely zero remorse for his actions. I bet if you asked him, he probably wouldn't even see himself as a villain. A quiet evil, but an evil 100%. Some happens to you, the headwright's got to stay in the family. This is the only way to do it. Some of these scenes with Hale just make you sick, dude. It's a long movie and he's got tons of scenes, giving you a new horrible act every few minutes just to make you hate the guy. There are a few standouts to me though, so I'm gonna focus on those, but really you could pick any scene you want and it's probably crazy, largely in part to the amazing performance by Robert De Niro. The first one is a scene that is masterfully crafted by Scorsese, and that's the one where we see Hale at that meeting the Osage are having. 
It perfectly sums up Hale's character because once we find out he's there at this meeting, he starts pretending to show concern for what the Osage are saying. That if anyone has any information about the murders, they should report to him so he can figure it out. It's a crazy move for him to pull. The Osage think he wants the info to help them, but again, he only wants it to help himself. It's honestly so tough to watch the Osage get fooled like this for most of the movie. And honestly, it's a tough film to watch until Jesse Plemons shows up to start putting an end to it. The one where he spanks Ernest is kind of strange, but I don't know. Not sure if it's supposed to be funny, but, but it kind of is. The next scene I want to talk about, though, is when Hale and Ernest take William back from the bank. And Hale says, that's my best friend right there. That's why I got to look out for him. And just just a benefit, you know, of friends, if he doesn't kill himself before the end of the year, I get more money. I'm sure you guys think that way with all your friends, right? That's normal, right? The way Robert De Niro delivers all of these lines is spectacular. He dips into this false empathy only to show his hand later and almost expect Ernest and the audience to go along with him and see his point of view. No, Hale, we're not going to see it. I'm blind to it. Another scene I love was when he's trying to get Ernest to sign essentially his family's inheritance away and it's this small nail in the coffin that shows Hale really only cares about himself. And the dude isn't too twisted to sacrifice his own blood, his own family, to get what he wants. Because he's my neighbor and he's my best friend. That's $25,000 laying there. Hale is an incredibly evil villain who He's just probably one of the most hateable villains of the entire year, and that includes Godzilla. Robert De Niro is amazing in this role. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the Oscar because he's just that damn good. Not really any complaints here. It's hard to say I love him as a villain because I just, I hate him so much. I just, I really hate him. But I guess that's a testament to a well-written villain. I'm gonna give William Hale a nine. I have a video, my top 10 villains of the year coming out this week. So hit subscribe. You don't want to miss it.